Several months back, I posted a video about using the Steam Deck as your primary computer by booting into the desktop mode and basically treating this thing like a teeny tiny Linux computer that you could plug into a desktop, you know, monitor, mouse, keyboard, and so forth and so on. I must admit, since then, I did very little of that. And the primary reason is because I'm just not a Linux guy. And I know some of you may be Linux guys and gals and you love your Linux stuff and you know all about uh, command lines and so forth, console with a K and all of these sorts of things. But I'm not one of those people. So I finally decided, and actually my reasoning for doing this is probably a little bit silly, a little bit specific, but I ended up installing Windows 10 and then actually upgrading to Windows 11 on this exact Steam Deck. And what I'm going to do today is I'm going to basically review the experience of Windows 11 on the Steam Deck. Now, like I said, my reasoning is a little bit specific and weird. I've actually started playing Madden for whatever reason. The first time I've been playing Madden in probably 15 years at this point. For some reason, it's pulled me back in. It's popped up on Game Pass. You download it through the EA app. And so what I wanted to do is I wanted to recapture the memories I had of playing Madden on my PSP, playing the franchise mode, right? I play a little bit, put it in standby, pop, pop the thing in my pocket, pull it back out three hours later, you know, simulate it a week or pick up some free agents, whatever. And it was just awesome. And I wanted to be able to kind of replicate that with my Steam Deck. But Game Pass doesn't work on the Steam Deck in Linux. So I found some software that let me install the EA app inside Wine, which is a Windows emulator, and then I could run Madden in there, but then at random, if I if I set it down for a while or put it in standby, when I came back up, my controls wouldn't be working, so I'd have to close the game and open it again. Really just defeated the whole purpose of doing that. And then... I wound up getting this really cool portable monitor, which really was just screaming for the Steam Deck to be plugged into it. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm just going to install Windows on this thing and just be done with this whole process. And honestly, installing Windows on this thing was shockingly easy. All I needed to do was go and download the Windows USB drive maker tool thing, plug it into the back of my JSOX dock, which my Steam Deck was plugged into. You start up the Steam Deck by holding down power and volume down. This puts you into your like your boot loader menu. You can pick what device you're booting from. And the device is turned sideways because this the panel is actually natively this way, and then the software turns it, whatever. That's not a huge deal. But it's like this, and you just go through your installation process just like it's any other Windows device. Now I went with Windows 10 Home, and you're gonna see here in just a second that it shows all the partitions that are already on the device. You're gonna need to go through and delete each of those partitions and then just install it on what is now just that free open space left behind. Once you are done with that part, you're just going to go to the website that Steam has available to download the sufficient drivers and install those things and you're pretty much rolling at that point. So what is it like actually using this? Well, let me just swipe up and you see that it does jump into your desktop relatively quickly. Now, you saw in the video that I was doing Windows 10. Well, it was simple enough. I literally just did the official normal path to Windows 11, and it went ahead and installed it just as if it was any other computer. It is actually compatible with Windows 11. No workarounds needed. And once you're done, guys, it's just Windows 11. So if you're familiar with Windows already, maybe you could stay on Windows 10 if you like that better, but it's just going to run exactly like Windows is going to run. Now, there's only one more additional thing that you're going to want to do to make this stuff work well, okay? It is a program called Steam Deck Tools because by default, some programs are not going to know how to use these controls. So like games and Game Pass won't really know what to do with these controls. And also, you don't have you know access to your hotkeys like the Steam button and the stick down to change the brightness of the screen, so forth and so on. You want to have that stuff and you want to have fan speed control. You want to be able to go in and change stuff like your TDP, stuff like your refresh rate, all of these sorts of things. You want to have all this stuff. So Steam Deck Tools... That's definitely the way to go. I'll drop a link to it in the description, but it's super simple, guys. You just install it, and you're going to see this stuff popping up in your notifications down there. 
and there's very little that you need to do to set it up. So from there, you have a trackpad to move your mouse around. You can click it to click. You can click over here to left click. I'm sorry, right click. It's on the left side, but it right clicks. And that does make sense intuitively with your just how you use the device. But you can also use the triggers, right? So if that sometimes I, I try to use that in the mouse moves, we'll just use the trigger to left click and to right click. And that honestly does work pretty well and feel you know pretty decent. So I'm actually gonna use a mouse here just to make things easier for myself. Let me uh, open up a game here real quick and I'll show you kind of how fast this works. And I'm gonna do it an Xbox Game Pass game primarily because that's something you can't really do when you are using the Steam OS. Okay, so obviously that app did not open up super fast. It's faster on my main computer, but still not terrible. And we're gonna go with Tunic. And I'm just gonna let this roll in real time, okay? Because Game Pass games do seem to launch a little bit slowly, but once they do load in, they're okay. Okay, so we are in the game, and as you can see, my controls are working. The Steam Deck Tools application is doing its job really, really well. So one really nice option that comes in handy a lot when running Windows in a game is hitting Steam plus your options button to do Win plus Tab so you can kind of quickly jump between your open applications. This is again something that you're going to need that Steam Deck Tools program installed to do. And from there, it's going to be pretty easy to either close the game or to go into something else. We'll jump back into Tunic here and we're going to click on continue so that I can try and just show you just a little brief amount of gameplay here. Although it's not super relevant, a game like Tunic should run just fine. Oh, actually, I'm glad that I did this. You can see that my controls are not actually working. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into alt tab. We're going to click on our little uh, icons down here and we're going to left click on the little computer which means it's in desktop mode and we're going to switch it to 360 mode and let's jump back into the game and now our controller is working so that is something that you do need to do in these game pass games from time to time you'll need to toggle it into this other mode but otherwise Everything works like really well now. The controls are, are great. The performance is solid on this game, which by the way, Tunic is an awesome game. Really, really, really fun game. And then whenever you're done, you can Steam plus your uh, options button. And let's just use our touchscreen to close out of, their, out of that app. And you'll see that my trackpad and everything is still working. Trackpad works to scroll works to move the mouse around, but you lose your buttons, okay? So the buttons no longer do anything whenever you're in uh, Xbox mode. So you gotta click, click, and put it back to desktop mode, and now your joystick will scroll, your triggers will work as left and right click again. But it's super quick and easy to toggle these things back and forth. We've got Horizon Zero Dawn running now, which is another game that I need to go back to. And it's, it's actually running really well. Maybe I'm just misremembering, but I feel like my settings look worse than this on this on a on Steam OS. I need to get my gyroscope controls working because I need to be able to fine tune my aim that way. But at any rate, um it seems to be running really quite well. Now one thing I wanted to demonstrate for you too, something that some people may be worried about, is the ability to put this thing into sleep or standby while you are playing a game, okay, so I've, I've hit that power button. The fan has now fully ramped down to nothing. Now let's wake it back up again, and the game is still there. I should be able to simply resume. Now, for some reason, it is not full screen, so there is definitely a small problem. Let's go into our settings. This is actually the first time I've seen it do this, but this is the first time I've played this particular game, so let's go ahead and maybe if we go borderless... Let's see if it's in borderless mode if it does that again. Let's go back to standby and let's wake back up again. Okay, there you go. So that might have solved that problem. You can see here that my settings are sort of uh, mostly lows and mediums, but nothing nothing too crazy. And it is running at 1280 by 800. That is the native resolution. And it's running pretty well. Now, I have my refresh rate locked at 40 hertz so that it can just stay at about 40. I just dropped down to 36 there for a second. But overall... It appears to be staying at a pretty decent spot. Now, let me show you what this looks like on a larger screen. Maybe you can see the graphics a bit better that way. 
I think you can see here guys, it honestly doesn't look too bad even on these lower settings and my frame rate is staying pretty solid. Now that I've switched to the external monitor, I'm not capped at 40 hertz anymore. So it is actually getting up into the 50s, which tells me that I could probably raise these settings just a little bit. Now I wanna talk for a minute more though about just using this thing in Windows. And when you're in Windows, everything runs pretty much as you would expect it to because this is a Windows PC and it's not even an ARM Windows PC, okay? This is on x86 architecture. So any application that you want to install is theoretically going to install just fine. Browsing the web is pretty quick. You can go on YouTube. You can do whatever you want to do, guys. It's a computer, okay? It's running Windows. You can go into the Microsoft Store and install applications in there. You could install the phone link application and pair it up with your phone, Spotify, Netflix. I mean, come on guys, I could keep naming stuff all day. And what you can see here is that, you know, look, is this the fastest computer that you will ever own? No, it's not, okay? My desktop is definitely faster, but this thing is absolutely good enough to get the job done for most things that I'm doing. And when I drop it in my dock and I've got a mouse and a keyboard and a bigger screen, it is super easy to just forget that you're not using a little handheld computer. Now, the last thing I wanna show simply because I did call it out in the very beginning is I'm gonna load up Madden because I also made a video a couple of years back complaining that they never made a Madden for the Nintendo Switch and how that really irritated me. Well, guys, I have effectively made my own Madden for Nintendo Switch by running Windows on my Steam Deck. So we're gonna boot into Madden real quick and it is a pretty darn solid experience. I'm playing my franchise mode. I'm having a good time with it. I'm playing on the handheld. I'm dropping into the dock and grabbing my Xbox controller and having a good time. So here we go, let's load in. And one thing again that we need to know, you can see down here at the bottom, it thinks it's a mouse and keyboard for your controls. So what do we have to do? Well, we need to go to our controls here and let's change them over to Xbox mode. And now when we hit a button, it should recognize it as an Xbox controller. And we're off and running, guys. So I'm obviously not going to play much of this. I just want you to see what kind of performance that you are in fact getting and that it's pretty darn good, right? Like this is absolutely smooth enough to, to play with no problems. It's not on super high settings, but it plays really, really well, okay? I mean, you know what these Titans are doing, right? You know, you know where we're going. You know what we're doing. We're, we're picking up. We're picking up six up the gut with the king. Guys, when I first got my Steam Deck, I was pretty quickly pretty enamored with the thing and I was playing it a lot but after some time the honeymoon phase was kind of over and i kind of lost some interest in it i wasn't playing it very much and some of the games that i wanted to play like madden i couldn't really play all that well now that i've installed windows 11 on it though i feel like the honeymoon is back on and i'm absolutely loving the thing and i'm finding myself really often leaving it plugged into this monitor with this mouse and keyboard so that i have a full computer here and another full computer here to just do other things on and for whatever reason i find that to be really enjoyable windows 11 on the surface duo if you're scared of doing this thinking it's going to remove functionality it's going to make things worse in my opinion it has only made things better guys i will see you on the next one and until next time stay nerdy my friends